Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am genuinely sorry for my unintentional hiatus. 2020 and the start of 2021 were just too much for me to handle, but I'm back now with a new Skillshare class and everything. It's called How to Paint Black Animals in Watercolor. It's the first class in a two-part mini-series on how to paint animals at either end of the value spectrum. I started planning the classes last spring, but due to the state of the world, things just kept getting pushed back. The first class is up now, and we'll chat a little bit more about it towards the end of the video. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. For today's video, I wanted to paint something for all of you that tied into the new class but was unique and used a different approach than is typical for me. After looking at countless references, I somehow decided that I wanted to paint a mountain gorilla again, which I've attempted at least three or four times before and I've failed all of those times, so we're already off to a great start. My friend Marley reminded me that I painted an orangutan that I loved a while back with a flat brush, and since it's been so long since I've used a flat brush, I figured, why not? Let's go for it. The background of this painting was painted using Florentine Green from Stone Ground Paint Company, which is made from PG-17. Chromium oxide green is often flat and opaque, but Stoneground's handmade version has the most beautiful granulation, and I completely fell in love with it after purchasing a palette from them last year. I love using this for backgrounds. The brush that I'm using is a half-inch Synthetic Studio Flat from Jackson's Art, and I'll put the link to that in the description below. After the background dried, I started to lay in my first light gray wash. This was mixed from ultramarine blue, terra rosa, and neutral tint, and then diluted down to the consistency that was needed to match the gorilla's lightest values from the reference photo. My style is pretty controlled when using a round brush, but I have a lot of fun letting loose when I use flats. It's kind of like the different tools allow me to explore a bit more since there aren't a lot of expectations associated with them that I impose on myself. Not every stroke was perfect, but I had fun, and after the year that we've all had, that's really all I can ask for. Once the first wash dried, I went in with my mid-tones, still using loose strokes, but narrowing my focus away from the highlights. This stage of the painting lets me find my forms and map out where my shadows need to be. While you're watching this come together, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the mountain gorillas. If you've been around the channel for a while, you've probably already heard me talk about them. I even have an older video on the channel about them and how I got emotionally involved with this species. As a little bit of a refresher for those of you who haven't heard, when I was a zoo educator, our little zoo put on a huge fundraiser every year to support the rangers that work to protect Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This region has been heavily impacted by war and armed conflict for the past two decades. The rangers work to protect the park, which is 3,000 square miles and a World Heritage Site, and many of them have lost their lives in service. While the critically endangered mountain gorillas are their flagship species, Virunga is also home to over 200 species of mammals, 700 species of birds, 100 species of reptiles, and 78 species of amphibians. Out of the 200 mammal species, 22 of them are primates, and it's the only site in the world to have three species of great apes, including the mountain gorillas, eastern lowland gorillas, and eastern chimpanzees. If you want to learn more about Virunga and the work that they do there, I'll leave links in the video description as well, but it's safe to say that I have a very special place in my heart for them, and it's always kind of frustrated me that I don't have a proper painting to show for that. Spoiler alert, I'm not entirely happy with how this piece ends up turning out, but it is a step in the right direction in trying to capture the magnificent creatures that these gorillas are. Next in the painting process, I am painting in some of the darkest values, and honestly, this stage is so much fun. It's also pretty terrifying, but something about that flat brush once again comes to the rescue because we're using a very different and more carefree approach.
pretty limited when it comes to what sizes I have in flat brushes and need to pick up some more smaller options to have on hand. The only smaller flats that I actually have to work with in this case are a 3 8 inch angle shader that I'm using here from Princeton Velvet Touch and a size 4 flat shader from the same line that you'll see in a little bit. Neither were really ideal for what I was using them for, but we're going to make do. Like with most watercolor paintings, this one had a pretty severe, in quotes, ugly phase that it didn't really come out of until the very end. I will let this video finish playing out with some soothing shots as we finish up the painting. If you want to learn more about painting black animals in watercolor, please consider checking out the new Skillshare class. In that class, we'll go into more depth about how to mix black and how those compare to tube colors that might be available. We learn how to identify colors within reference photos and then pick out suitable paint colors for that subject. And we round off the shorter lessons of the class by talking about value and backgrounds as they apply to painting dark subjects. After all of that, we put our newfound knowledge into practice with a class project as always. I have two demonstrational videos of a cat and a dog to show you how all that information fits into my personal workflow. Once again, I will leave that link in the description below and you can check out the introduction to the class for free to see if it's something that you would enjoy. The next class after this one will be on the opposite end of the value spectrum on learning how to paint white animals in watercolors. And honestly, I think my favorite part about all of this is I'm just so excited to see everyone's fur kids in the project gallery. It's been so long since my last upload that I'm sure there are new items in my Etsy shop since the last time you heard it from me here on YouTube, unless you're already following me on Instagram or Patreon or my mailing list. So that link will also be in the description below. Thank you all so much for your patience with me. I know that it's really difficult when the content that you are used to seeing on a regular basis kind of disappears. I've gone through that with the content creators that I watch, and I'm sorry that I wasn't uh, able to, to keep up uh, last year, but I'm hoping we are back on track for a better 2021. I am wishing you and your loved ones all the best for this new year, and I'm wishing a very, very special thank you to all of my patrons who have been keeping me afloat during such difficult times. I am very much looking forward to seeing you all again soon because we have got to finish up those color spotlight videos in the brand by brand series. But until then, happy new year and happy painting.